Greetings, scholars and students of imperial history. Today, we shall look at the world of Katha and the great battles that took place there between the Imperial Navy and the armies of the Great Foe. The shrine world of Katha, once a bastion of Imperial faith and piety, found itself besieged by the insidious forces of chaos. This sacred planet, renowned for its consecrated grounds and temples, became a theater of war, showcasing the eternal struggle between the Emperor's divine will and the Warp's malevolent entities. As the Imperial forces, led by the stoic Guardsmen of Cadia, were dispatched to reclaim Cather, they faced the corruption that had taken root and an enemy that was as relentless as it was ruthless. A spearhead fleet was dispatched to investigate the plague that had spread to the world. Here, the spearhead fleet led by the brave men and women of the Imperial Navy and the Raven Guard engaged the foe. The turning point of this conflict unfolded not on the blighted surface of Cather, but in the void above it, where the Imperial fleet engaged a formidable Chaos Armada. The Chaos fleet, led by the notorious Terminus Est, brought with it the festering power of Nurgle, threatening to overwhelm the Imperial defenders through might and horror. The battle in the stars was both fierce and desperate, as the Imperial Navy executed a series of calculated maneuvers and broadsides in a valiant effort to protect the planet below and cut off the reinforcements feeding the Chaos War Machine. Amidst this celestial onslaught, the Imperial fleet achieved a rare feat, delivering significant damage to the Terminus Est, a victory not seen since the Battle for Terra. As the battle raged above and on Cather, each salvo and maneuver in the void above was a blow dealt to the unclean ones. So please sit and listen closely as I retell a tale of glorious sacrifice and strength. The threat emerged from the warp, not from Cathur's surface. Thus, when the sirens began to wail and the limbless servitors connected to the navigation consoles started babbling and moaning in alarm, the crew was not surprised. The arch enemy ships spilt from the wound in space. Sir, a naval rating inquired. Straden smoothed his greying moustache with his fingertips and nodded to the bridge officer. A grim grin creased his thin lips. All power to the Nova Cannon. Terminus Est tore a hole in the stillness of space, ripping back into reality with hull-shaking force. The ship screamed forward through real space, trailing warp tendrils of psychic fog, the color of madness. The Herald's flagship was beyond colossal. Originally built as a battleship beyond reckoning, it had become grotesquely swollen by chaos over the ten millennia since it first left the orbital docks of its forge world. Its ridged surface bristled with a thousand disease-caked cannons, each poised to unleash devastation. The gangrene and grey hull sizzled as the last vestiges of the warp's psychic touch fizzled away, burning off the organic filth coating the ship's metal skin. It took several seconds for the coldness of space to reassert its material physics over the vessel, extinguishing the flames of corruption as reality reclaimed its dominance. Like flies around a corpse, lesser ships orbited Terminus Est, initially clinging close to the flagship, but soon beginning to form into attack groups. In the wake of the great vessel and its interceptor parasites, Bulky cruisers emerged from the agonizingly bright slit in the universe. Three, ten, nineteen, and still they came, vomited forth from the Empyrean, trailing streams of psychic fog as reality gripped them once more. On the reeking bridge of Terminus Est, the creatures bonded to their stations hissed and shrieked. Typhus rose from his throne, leaning on the guardrail surrounding his podium, Surround them. Allow none to enter the warp. It was an unnecessary order. The Chaos fleet had emerged from the Immaterium at a considerable distance. Still, the severity of their emergence warp wound would wreak havoc on the Imperial's navigation systems. Interceptor fighters were already being scrambled. 
No Imperial vessel would escape what was coming. Report, Typhus burbled. The response came from a mutated thing, half fused to its scanner console. Its voice, though utterly human, was punctuated by hacking coughs. A cluster of twelve troop barges, six sword class frigates in orbital spread, two dauntless class light cruisers in a defensive ring, five Cobra class destroyers, one Dominator class cruiser in high orbit. The reports came in a steady stream. They are nothing to us. But that, Typhus pointed with his Man Reaper scythe at the cavernous viewscreen, what is that? Astarte's strike cruiser Great Herald, the once human creature choked out, identified as the Second Shadow, Raven Guard Allegiance. Typhus's laughter drowned out the rest of the creature's report. The Imperial fleet above Cather was modest in size, to say the least. The battle group in orbit was balanced for its role as the forward element of the reclamation forces. The sluggish troop transports were almost unarmed and lacked the maneuverability to survive a dedicated engagement. The destroyers and light cruisers flanking the wallowing troop ships were jagged, blade-like, and deadly, crewed by veterans of Battlefleet Scarus, each bearing scars and memories from centuries of war against the arch enemy. Among the smaller ships, the Raven Guard strike cruiser was the unsubtle jewel in the fleet's crown. As the dagger-like light frigates and their destroyer escorts banked to face the new threat, the Second Shadow powered up its ancient engines and primed its vicious weapon array, designed to break any blockade and still have the firepower left to hammer a city into dust from low orbit. Yet it remained in orbit while the Imperial fleet tore away to meet the attack. The Depth of Fury was the sole Imperial Navy ship of true cruiser size in the battle group. A Dominator-class cruiser, it was a rare sight in Battlefleet Scarus and often regarded as the Navy's bastard son. More reliable classes, such as the Lunar, Gothic and Dictator cruisers, held places of pride among naval ranks, forming the backbone of most battle groups. The Dominator's lack of desirability stemmed from its main weapon, the Nova Cannon. Thrusting from the armoured prow like a bared lance and nearly half a kilometre in length, the Nova Cannon required a horrendous amount of preparation to fire, even once. Its inefficiency in orbit-to-surface warfare rendered it less versatile than standard lance batteries, making it even less desirable. Additionally, mounting a Nova Cannon on any ship smaller than a cruiser was not viable due to the weapon's immense recoil. At best, firing the weapon would throw navigation into chaos and take precious minutes to recover. At worst, and much more likely, the recoil would collapse a smaller vessel's superstructure, destroying the ship. Thus this difficult and awkward weapon found its home on the prow of the often disregarded Dominator-class cruisers. Captain Straden needed to become more familiar with being assigned to lesser duties, tasks he considered far beneath the honor of commanding an Imperial cruiser. As he sat on his command throne, he felt the heavy thrum resonate through his bones as his beloved, often underestimated ship came about to a new heading. The engines shook the entire vessel, a testament to the labor of 5,000 slaves and servitors toiling in the endless layers of the Fury's aft decks. The Engineerium was a chaotic hothouse of banging machinery, burning furnaces, sweating slaves, and bellowing petty officers wielding pistols and whips. I count 26 hostiles, Captain, a junior officer called out in front of a bank of crackling scanner monitors. Sacred Throne. Report, Straden commanded, his voice remaining calm. The flagship reads as the... the Terminus Est, the junior officer stammered. Lantia Straden had captained Depth of Fury for 11 years. Before that, he commanded a Cobra-class destroyer for six years, and even earlier, he served as a lieutenant aboard a Lunar-class cruiser. His long career in the Holy Fleet was honorable, if not exceptionally distinguished, marked by a record of victories that earned him his current position. Seated in the spacious, antique throne of one of the Emperor's own blessed battle cruisers. 
At his command was the power to obliterate vast amounts of life, entire cities, even whole worlds. He had often wielded this power, annihilating thousands with a single word. It was his duty, and his duty was his passion. The Depth of Fury, with its ill-favored main armament, was a formidable force under his leadership. This was the first time Straden could remember feeling that the meters-thick adamantium armor of an imperial ship, combined with the invisible, crackling protection of void shields, would simply not be enough. Hearing the name of that accursed ship, Terminus Est, which had haunted Segmentum Obscurus for thousands of years, brought a cold certainty of death. He steepled his fingers, elbows resting on the arms of the command throne. Death. The thought was oddly liberating. Bring us about until Terminus Est is in our forward fire arc. Start us on the Nova Cannon. A weapons rating looked up from his console, one hand raised to his earpiece. Prow fire control reports all systems ready, he said. Warn the Engineerium to make final preparations. Dozens of voices chattered around the bridge, speaking into Vox mics, alerting officers across the ship that the main armament was preparing to fire. Straden requested a ship-wide Vox and a rating and patched it to the systems within his command throne. This is the captain, he began, his mouth growing dry even as a calm took more excellent hold on his heart. All crew to battle stations, braced to fire the Nova cannon in 30 seconds. Station commanders to sound off when ready. The Vox blared into life as returning signals crackled through. Navigation ready, boomed a voice across the bridge, emanating from the speakers. Port laser batteries locked down and ready, came a second voice. And on it went. As the various districts of the colossal ship reported their readiness, Straden watched the rotted hulks of the arch-enemy ships tearing closer. The ship began to shake anew, taking the first impacts from the light cruisers thrusting ahead of the behemoth Terminus Est. Fighters spilled from the larger Chaos ships, but while the smaller vessels of the Imperial fleet took a hammering from their interceptor weapons, depth of fury ignored them utterly. It speared away from the planet, launching towards its target like a shrike diving at its prey. Signal the captains of precious loyalty and the Lord Castellan to power up and flank us for the first 5,000 kilometers of our run. Then they will break away when we fire the Nova cannon, lest they catch the first wave from our broadsides. Compliance, murmured a Vox servitor, relaying the orders to the commanders of the smaller frigates. Depth of fury shuddered harder, taking severe impacts for its void shields and straining under the stress of the plasma drives, propelling the ship far beyond standard thrust. Come on, Straden whispered. Come on, please, come on. Engineerium, the voice began, and Straden was already out of his seat before it finished. Ready. Straden stared at the viewscreen, at the bloated shape of Terminus Est powering closer through the void. He drew his formal saber and aimed it at the image before him. Kill. That. Ship. The principles of Nova Cannon technology are relatively simple. Generators mounted in depth of Fury's prow and the cannon itself charge up, creating a series of powerful magnetic fields. Teams of slaves in the prow work with massive loading machinery to feed a specially prepared projectile, an implosive charge the size of a small building into a great hallway known as the release chamber. Bulkheads slam down as the Nova cannon readies to fire. The firing mechanisms must be isolated from the rest of the ship, and it is rare for all slaves to escape in time. As depth of fury thundered towards Terminus Est, battered by the fury of a dozen lesser vessels, Straden demanded haste above all else. Hundreds of slaves and servitors perished in the preparation, even before the ship's ultimate destruction several minutes later. Upon the order to fire, the magnetic fields accelerate the payload and hurl it from the fixed cannon at a speed close to the speed of light. Then, 
the time-consuming and dangerous reloading process begins, and the cycle repeats. The payload hurtles through space faster than the human eye, or indeed most instruments of human design, can track. It is programmed not to implode within a safe distance of the firing vessel. A Nova cannon's destructive force is immense. Of course, this failsafe can be overridden. It would be done in only a handful of minutes. The projectile lanced across the distance between the two converging ships faster than the blink of an eye. Once it struck, it was programmed to implode, collapsing in on itself and achieving a density so intense that all nearby matter would be sucked inside and compressed to practically nothingness. This is how stars die. The Terminus Est, a ship as feared as it was loathed for its embodiment of decay and corruption, met a brutal assault from the Imperial vessel Depth of Fury. As the weapons of the Loyalist ship found their mark, a significant portion of the Chaos ship's prow was violently torn from reality, a void in space where once had been a festering bulk of metal and malignancy. The air was thick with tension on the bridge of the Depth of Fury. The crew's focus was palpable as instruments chirped and servitors labored at their endless tasks. Amidst this orchestrated frenzy of naval warfare, a calm voice cut through the noise. The lieutenant at the primary weapons console confirming the inevitable. Direct hit. The Terminus Est was not merely struck, but grievously wounded. From the rent in its armored hull, a grotesque ballet of debris, twisted metal, mutated remnants of its crew, and other less identifiable matter, spun silently into the void. The sight was grimly punctuated by droplets of dark fluid, which blossomed into crimson crystals in the merciless freeze of space, a macabre snowfall drifting away from the gaping wound. As the Chaos vessel began a cumbersome rotation, an attempt to shield its now vulnerable bridge from further assault, the atmosphere on the bridge of the Depth of Fury grew more intense. Captain Straden, observing the enemy's maneuver, spat a curse through gritted teeth. The tactical display reported disturbing details. 16% hull damage, Captain. Their venting air pressure and thousands of dark organic fluid kiloliters. Terminus Est is still coming, Captain. Straden's gaze upon the report was withering, his contempt for the news palpable as he regarded the messenger with undisguised disdain. The gravity of their situation was apparent, and in a voice that bore the weight of both duty and an unyielding resolve, he issued his command, imbued with the divine mandate of the God Emperor himself. Then by the God Emperor, you will fire again. The unfolding drama above Cather became a smooth orbital ballet as the ships slid past each other slowly. Formations broke and reformed. Lesser ships danced around the greater ones, and the heavier cruisers unleashed silent beams that lanced across space, burning out as fountains of high-energy sparks sprayed from crackling void shields. When a ship's shields finally buckled, the lances of light cut directly into the hulls, scarring them deeply, slicing ships into pieces one shard at a time. The second shadow did not follow Depth of Fury. The rest of the Imperial fleet did. The lighter cruisers and destroyer frigates of the Imperial Navy charged with a desperate ferocity towards the arch-enemy flagship. Their plasma drives cut through the void, leaving behind ethereal trails of energy-charged mist, a stark contrast to the grim finality of their mission. Deep within the bowels of these vessels, slaves and servitors toiled relentlessly, oblivious to the looming spectre of doom that awaited them. Yet, on the bridges of these ships, the seasoned officers were acutely aware of the grim reality. Survival was a luxury they could not afford, and their only remaining duty was to exact a heavy toll upon the enemy. As the Imperial fleet hurled itself against the overwhelming might of the Chaos forces, a notable absence marked the battle with a poignant reminder of the complexities of Imperial command. The Second Shadow, a strike cruiser renowned for its lethal efficacy, 
remained conspicuously idle in orbit. This was the embodiment of Astarte's autonomy, a stark display of the Space Marine's prerogative to act independently from the Imperial Navy's command. Amidst the cacophony of battle, frantic calls for aid crackled through the Vox, with the voices of Imperial Navy commanders oscillating between stern demands and desperate pleas. They sought the Astartes' intervention, hoping that the Second Shadow's formidable firepower might tip the scales in their favor. Yet the Black Cruiser maintained a deceptive calm, its outward stillness belying the flurry of strategic planning and preparation within its hallowed halls. This moment encapsulated a fundamental tension within the Imperial war effort, highlighting the distinct paths of duty that often diverged between the Navy and the Astartes. While the Navy embraced a path of glorious self-sacrifice, the Space Marines, bound by their own codes and strategies, opted to hold their might in reserve, calculating the opportune moment to strike. This juxtaposition of desperation and deliberate calculation serves as a somber reminder of the multifaceted nature of warfare, where courage and prudence often intertwine, leaving historians and tacticians to ponder the what-ifs of these critical junctures in the eternal war for the survival of humanity. The frigate Precious Loyalty, under the command of Lieutenant Terris Vin, a scion of the wealthy and influential family from Gudrun, faced its final, cataclysmic moments. As chaos unfolded around him, two thoughts dominated the young lieutenant's mind, casting a stark light on the brutal reality of his ascension to captaincy under the most harrowing circumstances imaginable. Firstly, the grim acknowledgement that his promotion had come at a dreadful cost, and secondly, more pressing concern about the whereabouts of his right arm, which had been severed just below the shoulder by a devastating torpedo strike. In the aftermath of the explosion, Vin, now grievously wounded, regained consciousness amidst the ruins of what had once been the nerve center of his ship. Once a hive of strategic command and precise operations, the bridge was now nothing more than a smoldering wreck. Choking on the acrid smoke that filled the air, he pushed through the pain of his fresh amputation, his uniform soaked with blood as he staggered to his feet amidst the chaos. The situation was dire. The officers who might have taken command were no more, their lives claimed by the same assault that had maimed him. The bridge crew lay scattered, some buried under debris, others motionless in their final posts. The servitors and ratings, those dedicated souls who operated the ship's various systems, were incapacitated mainly dead, dying, or hopelessly trapped under the twisted wreckage of their stations. Driven by a sense of duty that outweighed even his own shock and loss, Vin issued a command to the Navitorium for maximum thrust, a desperate bid to maneuver the crippled frigate out of immediate danger. Unbeknownst to him, the lower decks had fared no better. Only a quarter of the thousand slaves tasked with powering the engines were still alive and the rest had fallen victim to the same catastrophic barrage that had ravaged the bridge. The damage inflicted upon the precious loyalty was catastrophic, defying the structural integrity expected of such a vessel. By every measure of design and expectation, it was nothing short of a miracle that the ship remained intact. Lieutenant Terris Vin now the de facto captain of the frigate Precious Loyalty, found himself steering a precarious course through death and devastation. With resolute command, he ordered the helm to stabilize and chart a direct path towards the Terminus Est, a vessel synonymous with the nightmares of the Imperium. His ship, a dauntless class light cruiser, responded with surprising agility given its battered state, veering sharply back on course toward its formidable target. However, the path was not clear. The Daughter of Agony, a Chaos cruiser with a hull as dark as the void itself, drifted ominously into their trajectory. This foe was not idle. Its broadsides thundered, unleashing a torrent of hellfire upon the flaming husk of the Depth of Fury, another Imperial vessel caught in the throes of battle. Through the dense smoke of his own bridge, Vin shouted for action. 
Forward batteries! Forward batteries fire! His voice was a beacon in the gloom. Yet the response from his ship was a grim testament to the damage it had sustained. Only half of the batteries responded. The rest had been obliterated, their emplacements now nothing more than deep, scarred hollows in the loyalty's prow. The beams that did fire cut through the space with diminished force, their lethal potential dissipating into harmless patterns against the robust void shields of the Daughter of Agony. Desperate to alter their fate, Vin commanded, Go around! Ram the Terminus Est! It was a bold maneuver that, if successful, would have served as a monumental act of retribution for the fallen crews of the Imperium. But the tides of war are seldom forgiving. The Daughter of Agony began to maneuver, its form twisting with a serpentine grace that belied its monstrous nature. A flurry of lance fire erupted from its turrets, licking across the vessel's back with a ferocity that made the cruiser seem clad in scales of destructive light. This moment, poised between heroic resolve and the grim reality of war, encapsulates the relentless courage of Imperial commanders like Terris Vin. Faced with overwhelming odds, their decisions, made in split seconds amidst the roar of guns and the cries of the wounded, are driven by a blend of duty, desperation, and a profound commitment to the Imperial cause. The voice of a helm officer, starting a sentence he would never complete, was abruptly silenced as the vessel erupted into a radiant starburst of plasmic energy. Debris, propelled in a thousand directions, traced the final explosive breath of the ship through the void. This tragic spectacle was not unique. Similar scenes of destruction unfolded across the beleaguered Imperial fleet. Meanwhile, the depth of fury now bore the scars of relentless conflict. Stripped of its protective shields and trailing shards of jagged metal from numerous grievous wounds, the ship pressed onward. It was assailed by a swarm of chaos fighters, reminiscent of a plague of locusts that harried the cruiser relentlessly. These small, agile vessels buzzed around the four-kilometer length of the depth of fury. Their attacks a constant source of torment. Amidst the chaos, the depth of fury trembled under a relentless hail of fire. Pressurized air and flames, snuffed out almost as quickly as they were born, erupted from the newly minted breaches in its hull. The magnificent cathedral-like structures that once graced its spine now lay in ruins, their skeletal remains evoking the image of a long-lost civilization fallen into decay. On the bridge of the depth of fury, the captain faced an onslaught of dire reports that flashed before him, each dismissed almost as quickly as it was acknowledged, save for the most critical. The vessel's structural integrity was compromised beyond sustainable repair, with too many decks collapsing to enumerate effectively. Essential in the ship's defense, the void shield generators had been jettisoned into the void of space in a desperate bid to prevent an internal catastrophe. The plasma drives, essential for propulsion, were failing rapidly. Half were already inoperative. The navigation team, battling against the odds, struggled to control the wounded behemoth. Yet, any semblance of control, they managed to assert, was fraught with uncertainty, the ship's systems responding erratically at best. The depth of fury executed a daring maneuver that would be recounted for generations in the annals of the Imperium. As the cruiser hurtled forward, it found itself precariously positioned between two chaos vessels. Behemoths of the Void, painted in the blasphemous hues of grey-green, emblematic of their allegiance to the Dark Forces. In a moment that seemed suspended in time, the banks of cannons aboard the Depth of Fury roared to life, their thunderous voices breaking the haunting silence of the cosmos. The Salvo was a spectacular display of Imperial might, tearing significant scars along the hulls of the Chaos ships as the Fury, akin to a crumbling dagger, sliced through the narrow gap that separated these vessels of corruption. The image was majestic and devastating, Despite the grievous damage it had sustained, 
The prow of the Fury remained steadfastly aimed at its primary target, the Terminus Est. This infamous Chaos flagship, a symbol of dread and despair, rolled through the void, attempting to evade the inevitable. Captain Straden, standing resolute amid the chaos of his bridge, was acutely aware of the stakes. We'll only get one more shot, he knew, his thoughts a silent prayer to the throne. By the throne, I pray we make this count. The tension on the bridge reached a crescendo as a rating bellowed, main weapon primed. With no time for formalities or further preparations, Straden issued his command. This clarion call resonated with the weight of duty and a plea for divine intervention. Fire, in his glorious name, fire. Responding to its captain's command, the Nova Cannon of the Depth of Fury, a weapon of immense destructive capability, charged its magnetic fields with a frenzied urgency. In a brilliant flash of contained fury, it unleashed its implosive payload directly at the heart of the arch-enemy flagship. This act, executed in the throes of battle and under the shadow of imminent destruction, was more than a military maneuver. It was an act of defiance, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who serve the Emperor. The Imperial Cruiser Dep of Fury faced the monstrous chaos vessel Terminus Est in a confrontation that would sear itself into the memory of the Imperium. As the climactic moment approached, Captain Stredden and his crew braced for the outcome of their daring and desperate assault. The first consequence of this audacious strike was almost immediate and devastatingly effective. Propelled at velocities nearing that of light, the projectile from the depth of Fury's Nova Cannon struck the underbelly of the Terminus Est with the unforgiving force of a collapsing sun. The physics of implosion, harnessed and weaponized by the might of Imperial technology, wrought catastrophic destruction upon the Chaos flagship. Several decks were annihilated instantly, obliterated so thoroughly that they ceased to exist. A monstrous bleeding hole was gouged into the hull of the once invincible Chaos Traveler's vessel. From this grievous wound, wreckage, the remnants of the crew, and streams of corrupted fluids were expelled into the void of space, leaving a trail of destruction and disease in their wake. The colossal kickback from the cannon's discharge effectively arrested the forward momentum of the Fury wrenching the vessel into a perilous and uncontrollable veer to starboard. In that moment, the crippled predator, Terminus Est, sensed an opportunity as it loomed ominously in the viewscreen of the depth of fury, drifting ever closer to its disabled prey. During the dire moments aboard the crippled Imperial cruiser, a young bridge rating, his face blanched with terror, voiced the fear that gripped the hearts of many. We're dead in space, he stammered, the grim reality of their situation setting in. Do we abandon ship, sir? His words were abruptly cut short as desperation overtook the crew. The side of the young man's head burst outward in a dark, gruesome spray as he was executed for his display of fear. The commissar responsible, a stern figure with a hook nose and gaunt face, stood unflinching as he holstered his pistol. How dare he shame this vessel's final moments with a coward's talk, he declared, his voice cold and unforgiving. Captain Straden, witnessing the harsh discipline meted out, focused instead on the broader picture, turning his attention away from the grim scene. He stepped up to the ship-wide Vox system, his voice resolute as he issued what he knew to be his final command. Stand to your final duties, men of the Imperium. Be ready to greet the Emperor with pride. His call was a rallying cry, urging his crew to meet their end with the dignity befitting Imperium soldiers, rather than succumbing to despair. Meanwhile, orbiting above, the Second Shadow found itself similarly beleaguered. The Black Strike cruiser, despite being encircled by enemy destroyers, frigates and swarms of fighter wings, responded with the ferocity characteristic of the Astartes. Its formidable weapons array lit up the void with retaliatory fire, 
each salvo a defiant stand against the encroaching foes. Yet, for all its firepower, the second shadow was immobilized, unable to maneuver or escape the overwhelming forces that harried it from all sides. Boarding ports dilated like the widening eyes of a behemoth, and assault pods burst forth from these apertures. Their engines ignited, leaving fiery contrails in the void as they streaked across the battlefield. These pods, diminutive compared to the swarming chaos fighters encircling the cruiser, navigated through space with such speed and agility that they appeared as mere blurs to the enemy. The chaos forces, momentarily aware of these darting specks, found themselves unable to grasp these rapidly moving objects. These pods, each carrying a cargo far more precious than any ordinary munition, hurtled toward the planet. The Space Marine Strike Cruiser, a vessel of immense strategic and symbolic significance, embodied a value to the Raven Guard that transcended mere material worth. It was a bastion of their martial pride and a repository of their storied heritage. Similarly, the lives of the 50 Astartes aboard these pods were held in incalculable esteem, each warrior a paragon of the chapter's prowess and unwavering faith in the Emperor. Meanwhile, the chaos aboard the Depth of Fury contrasted sharply with the cold, calculated commands issued from the enemy. Their cannon amasses power once more, Great Herald, reported an underling to Typhus, who responded with a simple, decisive nod of his horned helm. End them, now. This directive sealed the fate of the Depth of Fury, even as the ship made one last valiant effort to strike. As the command main armament ready crackled through the Vox, these words, the last uttered by Ovor Werland, unwittingly became his final contribution to the Imperial cause. Captain Straden, momentarily taken aback by the determination and grit in that officer's voice, found himself pausing, his mouth agape. In a fleeting second of irrational impulse, he contemplated reaching out over the Vox to learn the name of this officer, to recommend him for a particular citation, a recognition that would never come. Captain Straden found himself caught in a maelstrom of destruction and defiance, his commands echoing through the collapsing corridors of the dying ship. Fire my damn gun! He roared with a ferocity that belied the imminent doom that enveloped him and his crew. The surviving weapons officers, beleaguered yet steadfast, responded with desperate urgency. The ship, grievously wounded by the enemy's relentless assault, twisted slowly through the void, its movements tormented and lethargic as it struggled to bring its main cannon to bear. The bridge of the depth of fury became a focal point of intense drama as the archenemy flagship dominated the viewscreen its menacing form a harbinger of death. It was so close that its bridge was visibly detailed in the view, a rare and unnerving sight that sent a chill through the crew. It's too close to fire, sir. A rating's voice cut through the tension, a note of panic underlying his words. We'll be caught in the implosion. The disbelief in Straden's reaction was palpable, it was a moment of incredulous clarity amid the chaos. Do I look like I give a shit? We're dead already. Fire! 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 He bellowed, his voice a rallying cry in the face of certain destruction. The magnetic fields of the Nova Cannon began to power up, a phenomenon Straden claimed he could feel, despite the impossibility. It was as if the impending release of energy resonated with his essence. His blood heated, his bones vibrated. Around him, the bridge began to detonate, sections of it succumbing to the violence of the battle. But Straden's focus was singular and unyielding. Ignoring the eruptions of sparks and the screams of the dying ship, he fixated on the enemy before him. Kill them! He cried out, his eyes alight, with what could only be described as savage brightness. For the Emperor! Kill them! His command was more than an order. It was a declaration, 
a defiance of the grim fate that awaited them. In these final moments, Captain Straden embodied the indomitable spirit of the Imperium. Facing annihilation, yet defiant to the end, his last thoughts not of surrender, but of striking a final blow in the name of the Emperor. In the final act of its storied service, the Imperial cruiser Depth of Fury met its end in a cataclysm of light and fury. As the plasma drives of the warship could no longer withstand the relentless barrage from the Terminus Est and its cadre of support cruisers, they succumbed to a violent eruption. This ultimate explosion unleashed shockwaves that buffeted the nearby Chaos vessels, momentarily unbalancing the Dark Fleet. The aftermath of this devastation left a sprawling cloud of plasma residue and debris suspended in the void, casting a bruise-colored nebula across the cold expanse of space. Through this chaotic aftermath, the Terminus Est, relentless and undeterred, cleaved through the dissipating cloud with predatory grace, much like a shark slicing through the depths of an ocean. This menacing advance was observed closely from its bridge where one of the Death Guard, stationed by the Herald's throne, remarked on the narrow margin of their escape. That was close, Lord Typhus, he commented, the hint of concern in his voice betraying the peril they had just narrowly avoided. If they had fired... His words trailed off into the charged silence that followed. Still, they were summarily dismissed by Typhus, whose focus remained unshaken. With a dismissive gesture, the Herald of Nurgle issued his following command, devoid of concern for the close call. Make for the second shadow. That dies next. His tone bore the weight of inevitability, a grim determination to continue the campaign of destruction. This moment, encapsulated within the broader tapestry of the conflict, highlighted the volatile nature of space warfare and the relentless pursuit of victory that defined both sides of the war. The fall of the Depth of Fury, while a blow to the Imperium, was a single chapter in the ongoing galactic conquest and resistance saga, with each side continually adapting and strategizing in the face of ever-changing dynamics on the battlefield. As Typhus turned his malevolent gaze towards the next target, it underscored the advance of chaos, ever pushing forward leaving behind the wreckage of Imperial Valor as a reminder of the high stakes at play in the cosmic struggle for supremacy. <laughs>